All right, so we made it to June. Good. It is June. And we have been working on um, pattern CS1301, which is the a sloper pattern. For wovens. For wovens. A bodice, is it here? It's right behind you. Oh, the pattern itself. Yeah, it's, woo. I'll get it. Oh, wait, there might be one right there if you reach over. Oh, yep. So this is what it looks like. Yes, I know it's backwards, but this is what you really all I'm trying to show you is what we've been working on for quite a few weeks now. So yeah, if you're just joining us, this is what we're working on. One of the biggest complaints of sewers and the reason sewers leave fashion sewing is that as they age and or gain weight, um, they don't know how to fit and they're baffled by how do I fit uh, the garments to my body. And some of them will even blame the pattern companies because they figure, well, they ought to be able to make a pattern that fits. They do. They make a pattern that fits one person that they use as their sample. And all the rest of us have to be willing to make the changes necessary. But when you don't know what they are, you're in the dark. So, so many times people just keep sewing garments, hoping one of them is going to fit. And it becomes very discouraging after a while. Or they try to retrofit. So after they put it together, then they try to figure out, well, what's wrong with it? And as you probably are learning in this class, that is not the best way to fit because sometimes you have to add fabric. And if you have to add fabric, you can't do that after you've sewn it together. And maybe the shoulder seam needs to have extra added to it like we did with the one behind me because it's for a person with a rounded back. So we had to add fabric up here at the shoulder seam so that shoulder would get up over that rounded area. Otherwise, it would either pull the arm side up and skew it toward the back because we'd only be pulling from the back to get it over this rounded area. And everybody has somewhat of a rounded area back here, but depending on your posture, your age, and a lot of times the occupation, uh, that you maybe had for many years, it could be even further. And then, of course, there is illnesses and disease and accidents that will also cause different shaping to the body. So pretty much anyone over the age of 35 or 40 ends up with a few little uh, necessary tweaks. But that isn't even the end of it. Sometimes we're just Wow, I was talking to you today about the woman who sent in her picture and her shoulders were extremely different heights. And she was not aware of that until we took the picture and we looked at her muslin. And then it was easy to see that. And so now she knows she has to make an adjustment on one side that she doesn't make on the other. No pattern's ever going to come with that. So there's lots of reasons to do a sloper. And once you've made one, you understand your own body better. And you'll have a better understanding all around of how to buy clothes as well as fit clothes. Mm -hmm. You'll have a better, not just of that, but of sewing in general, how patterns are put together, how, why, you know, it might curve this way when you're expecting it to curve a different way. Um, this is all stuff you just learn as you go when you're doing something like this. And then when you are making something maybe even completely different, you have a better understanding of why the pieces fit together the way that they do. Exactly, exactly. So a little bit of drafting is involved and understanding the drafting anyway. We're not really drafting, but we're understanding the draft. And I know some of you are getting real excited about that and having a ton of fun with it. And if that's the case, we have um, we have a little uh, uh, little special information at the end that could send you in the right direction. But right now, we want to uh, continue with the sloper we've been working on. 
and it's right behind me, but only half of it's there because last week we started making our pattern from our muslin. So we pin all of our seams and if you are just joining us for the first time, all you need to do is go to the archives of the videos and work your way back and you'll see all the directions on how to do this. So I don't want to you know, keep going over it, but I do want to remind you because some people are getting into this and then they kind of forget. So I want to remind you that quick. the horizontal lines must be parallel to the floor. They can't be going up and down at any angle. They should be as straight as you can get them. Absolutely straight. The center front that we marked on our pattern piece should be directly down the center front. If you're using a dress form, that's really easy because it's marked. But if you're not, you're putting it on a human body, then you've got to watch for the center of that clavicle and center all the way down. And then stand back and get a good critical eye. The shoulder seam must be straight on that shoulder. Don't let anybody tell you the center of your shoulder is your ear because it's not on most people. Most people, your ear is going to be in front. Why would somebody say that? I don't know. I don't know. It's like a fake, really. I don't know, but that's what the uh, that's what, and it might be that way when you're 12, but by the time you're 50, it's not because your whole body begins to shift. So anyways, make sure it's right on that shoulder. You can eyeball that. The side seam, again, make sure it's centered under the arm. And again, do not raise that arm side. Someone last week or the week before said, well, now my notches don't match up on my side seam because she had smoothed up some extra fabric from the back or the front. I don't know which, maybe both. If you need more room from here to here, You've got to add it up here. Don't take it away from here by pulling that arm side up or pulling the arm side up from the back or the front and not the, uh, the other because that will skew everything. So don't do that. Um, I think that pretty much gets you in the right direction. Just know that if you have, and take a critical look at yourself with a photograph, and if you have one shoulder lower than the other, know that you've always got to have a different shape on the right than the left and you can't get them mixed up when you cut your pattern out otherwise it really won't fit but when you're asymmetrical you have one shoulder or one hip lower then you've got to make sure that you mark those pattern pieces right and left and cut them accordingly so that's just the basics but i want to invite you to go back to the beginning of the series i'm sorry i can't tell you exactly when that was but you can they're all titled when you go to the video page and watch it over again fast forward through the stuff that you you know the chit chat or whatever but get to the meat of the class and watch it at least twice because this is new information for so many people and it can be slightly confusing but trust me once you get one of these done all of a sudden it clicks and it will help you with all of your fitting and sewing. Okay, Jess? Yes. All right. And just a reminder, um, last week uh, we were a little off. So if you weren't able to join us um, because we weren't able to do the video on Tuesday, we had to do it on Wednesday. Just like Janet said, it is archived because I know a lot of people set their timer, set their alarm for Tuesday and... Um, we had something unexpected come up and we made it up on Wednesday. So that is in the archives as well. Okay. So, um, again, I invite you, if you have issues and you're not able to keep those lines straight or something's not working, photograph a good in good lighting and give me a photograph of the issue and a few words about what you, what the issue is and how I can help you. Thank you, Mary. Uh, May, May 5th is the first of this series. Oh, you sent them back to March. Yeah, I did. No, mm -hmm. not them. That was just talking to Brenda. Oh. <laughs> Brenda here, not Brenda this time. Because <laughs> that's fine. She wasn't listening anyway. Yeah, probably not. May 5th. Okay, so we started this one. Prior to this one, though, back in March, probably. We February. Did, we did the knit 
I know that one is in February. Okay, so we started in February. So if you're interested in getting a really nice fit on your t-shirts and your knit garments, you could go back and watch that one. And uh, we no longer have the kits available for the knit at this time due to the lack of being able to purchase from all of our regular suppliers right now. Uh, but we do have plenty of kits available for the woven. And we do have uh, the patterns. It's just the fabric for the knit that we don't have. But we've got great kits for this one. And I will encourage you to purchase kit two or three Kit two and three both come with a DVD created by the master of this whole system, which is Connie Crawford. And so you would have Connie at your side and be able to watch that DVD. So many people have bought package one without the DVD and then come back and said, can I upgrade? Mm -hmm. And of course you can. So we would just charge you the difference. But if you're buying a kit for the first time, consider two or three to be your best option. Yeah during these series. Don't come to us like a year from now and ask to upgrade. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can try. Yeah, I mean, don't know. You might get us on a good day. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and by the way, we have a lot of muslin in stock. I did the first one of these. You have been with us through the whole series. I did one in muslin, just the basic ecru color. Well, you can't see it on camera to save your life. It's just terrible. So... I pitched that one aside and made one in uh, Kona cotton, which works great for muslin as well. It's just a little more pricey um, so that you'd be able to see it. But basically, I do my muslins out of muslin. Mm -hmm. But it really doesn't matter as long as it's something very uh, plain and yes. firm. Yes. Okay, so are we ready to move on to new information? Yeah, one tip that I didn't give and so reminding you to keep all that straight, make sure that that princess sock seam goes over the apex. The apex is, for lack of a better term, the nipple. So you want to make sure that as you adjust the fabric, you may have to take more out of the side, most likely, from here to here than from, from the, I'm getting backwards, from here to here. Because this center front line has to stay center front so don't let that move as you adjust this to match your bust size so don't let the center front move and don't let this seam not be directly over the apex okay that was my last <laughs> last one I had on my notes okay I think. <laughs> oh one more while you have it on yourself or on your dress form mark the waist most patterns have the waistline marked, and particularly if you're short or long-waisted, this might really help you when you go to compare it to another pattern as to where to sh where and how much to shorten or lengthen the torso. If you are short-waisted, you're going to need to shorten this. If you're long-waisted, you'll need to lengthen it. But by marking the waist out here, you can compare it to the waist on the commercial pattern. We'll get into that more as we do that. Okay. So like I said, last week we deconstructed half of our muslin or our sloper as it were and traced the lines, the new seam line. So the new seam lines is the, where we pin. And after we pinned, we marked it with a marker. And now we trace those lines onto our tissue pattern and create the new cut line, which we're gonna make 5 8 inch from the seam line. Particularly with princess seams and side seam, shoulder seams, we always want 5 8 I've left 5 8 at the neckline because we're not doing anything with the neckline anyway. So just to keep it easy to compare to commercial patterns, which put 5 8 inch seam allowances everywhere, and you that have been with Islander Sewing Systems for any length of time knows that's not good. In most cases, we don't want, or a lot of cases, we don't want 5 8 and that would be the neckline. But we won't go into that today. Just keep everything 5 8 that way you'll be able to easily compare it to the commercial pattern 
and then you'll trim any seams down before you sew. I hope that makes sense. All right, Jess, any questions so far? Nope. Any comments you'd like to share? No. Okay. All right, so then um, I'm going to go over and we're going to do a little quick demonstration on superimposing our sloper onto a commercial pattern. And just to confirm the fit and to make the changes in the tissue before we even cut the fabric out. So this is where your sloper really comes into play, right? Yeah. yeah. All yeah, right. Absolutely. This is when you've got it down. You're happy with it and you want to make your changes before you cut. All right, you ready? Yeah, so we'll just show them these. And um, as you can see, these are the kind of um, crude because we're marking on seams that we've pinned but you can kind of get the idea of where that seam should be. So this is the second half of what you have on the dress form. Yes, and this is what we took off last week, so I'm not gonna go into it too much. I'm just giving you a visual of how much this pattern changed. Here's the new seam line. The old seam line was here. So you can see there's quite a bit taken in at the waist more than the pattern called for. And everyone's gonna be different. And there is no wrong as long as it hangs straight and fits your body the way you want it to. So I took these and let's see, I've got one. Yeah, this. Yeah, okay. So we just put this on top. Of course, I've already cut away the extra. So I traced out the new cutting line, a new seam line. Then I added five eighths past that and I cut on the new cutting line. But you can see what a big difference there is in that piece alone. And of course in the back, here's where we had to add on to get it to go up over. All right, so let's take a look at our pattern versus a butterick pattern. And it doesn't matter what pattern uh, company you use as long as it's a good quality pattern. And some of you will be able to understand the difference between a quality pattern and a non-quality pattern because when you go to use this, if that pattern isn't drafted properly, it'll be more obvious now because you'll know the way it's supposed to be. So let's start with, uh, there's the center front. So we'll take the center front. Now this is the pattern I'm comparing it to. It's a nice uh, blouse pattern with the princess shoulder seam with several sleeve options. So you can see how, oh gee, I'd like to make this, but I want it to fit before I cut it out. So we'll start with the, uh, this is the front. All right, let's see. Here's the front of this one. So here's our commercial pattern that we want to make from this envelope. Here is our sloper that we know will fit our body. So we're going to line it up. You always want, now on this, on the front, you want to make sure that you hit the center front line. And this one's got a little extra here, but that's okay. Let's see. I'm going to stay on the center front. Now you can see how the shape of this pattern isn't coordinating with the shape of this body. So now I can draw this right out. And we had to come out a little further out here. So you can see you would need to add just a little bit. Let me put this one underneath and I think you'll be able to see maybe a little better. Uh, in that area anyway but you can see and this is where having the waistline line up might be helpful because oftentimes the neckline is going to be higher or lower and you have to compare that to your sloper uh, with a critical eye to decide if you need to change that I, 
I wouldn't in this one because you want that collar to fit. So we've got it lined up. We know that's right. And now we know the exact changes to be made here and up here. So we need a little bit wider here and a little bit narrower in this area. Okay, any questions on that before I continue? I want to make sure I'm getting my point across. Okay, um, Vicki does have a question. And I feel like you talked about this last week, but maybe not. Um, when extra fabric is added at the seam line, can you demonstrate how to make that adjustment from the muslin to the paper pattern with the seam allowance added? Well, sure. Um, right here, we added fabric. You could stay over there. It's oh. easier to see. Okay. Here we added fabric up here. And see on the shoulder, uh, we just changed the cut line. Let's see. I mean, I've added fabric here. See where it comes out here and a little bit there, um, here. So it's all about, once that's on there, this is the back, where's my back? Here it is. So I lay my back on here, get it lined up. And then when I trace it out, I continue up here and added this to it. So there it is right there. This is a different, this is the other pattern. So here it is. So there it is. There it is. Just remember that we've marked the seam line. And then we've added the seam allowance. So this was my seam line on my fabric I added. So I traced that, but then I added the 5 8 above it. So there's your difference. Does that help you, Vicki? Let me know if you um, have a follow-up on that. And the same thing happens anywhere. You're just going to trace. Once you trace your new seam line, then you take this away and now you add the new cut line, which is 5 8 inch from the new seam line. Okay. All right. Brenda is wondering, when comparing the sloper to a pattern, mm -hmm. like you're doing today, um, it should be very close to the same style? Well... Yes, if you're doing a shoulder princess seam, then this, that's what this is going to help you fit. If you're going to do an arm side princess seam, then the sloper you would want to have is the 1302. If you are doing a bodice that doesn't have a shoulder seam, maybe it's got fisheye darts down here, or maybe no darts, but the that one will have... The darts down here and shoulder darts and bust darts that's the one you'd want to use so it just depends and I like to have one of each I don't do the princess seam from the arm side I prefer the one from the shoulder so maybe I don't want 1302 but I'm definitely gonna do 1201 because it doesn't have any princess seams in it and a lot of garments today don't when you want something a little less fitted the idea of the princess seam is, is that if you're lucky enough, you have less body underneath your bust, and that's why you need the princess seam so it'll curve like that. I don't have that. I've got extra body down there. But so there's no other way to take this out of here. You can't take it out in the side seams. You've got to take it out in the princess seam. So if you want a nice fitted hourglass or more feminine shape to your garment. That's why you would use a princess seam pattern. So you kind of need the sloper for the princess seam and one that isn't the 1201 that doesn't have the princess seam. Then you should be able to use any commercial pattern. Okay, hopefully that helps Brenda. Um, 
Rose says that her muslin is four inches smaller than the sleeve. Can I adjust that by flattening the cap or is that too much? All right, so I want to ask Rose, did she walk the sleeve around the armhole and it was four inches too big for the armhole? Because something's seriously wrong. That's huge. All right, while we're waiting for her to answer, Rose, last week Janet showed how to walk um, the pattern around. So if you saw that and did that, let us know. And um, so Brenda Wright, she says, so you wouldn't use this slope per se with a boxy shirt. No. You wouldn't use this with like the Islander shirt. No, it would be too hard to compare. Right. It would be too hard to compare. That's where you would need the 1201. And the 1201 is a little bit easier to fit, but it's still the same thing. And if you bought package two or three when you bought your kit, that is addressed by Connie. That particular um, fit is addressed by Connie on the first model that she fits is the one with the fisheye dart and no uh, princess seams. She does both. Okay, uh, Rose said yes, that she did walk it around and she had a four inch difference. Wow. Should she email you? Yeah, I want to see where that arm size is hitting under her arm. Is Did it get jacked way up into her armpit uh, when she was adjusting? I don't know what she might have done. So send me a picture. And um, one of the things that the way this particular uh, pattern was drafted by Connie, the sleeves are interchangeable. So if you have adjusted that and you need a smaller or larger sleeve, you can just go to the size that you can walk into your arm size. So when you take out that multi-size pattern, you're gonna have three sizes to choose from. So let's say that you said, oh my gosh, I'm putting the 12 in, and it's way too big, then try the eight and walk the eight around. But make sure that arm size hasn't gotten too small. I don't. She I says she walked the measuring tape around both of them. No. I want you to walk the sleeve. It will make all the difference. Walk the sleeve. So go back and watch last week's, but you're going to mark and watch how I marked it. This is how we know that, and this one I've got a, this one last week I found out I have too much difference, so I'm going to go down a size. Uh, so that's the difference, but you'll know when you walk it around. But measuring it, it's not as accurate because you're, I don't know if you're measuring on the seam line or the cut line, but pattern drafters uh, always walk the pattern piece on the seam line, just like I showed you. And you can do that with collars and collar stands as well. Curves are hard to measure, so. Okay. Karen says, if you had to put small darts in the neckline, where should they be placed? Okay, so if you're, Karen. Karen, while I'm explaining, quickly tell me, do you have the DVD? Because if you had to put a dart in the neckline, you don't put a dart in the neckline. You make a pattern adjustment. You move that dart and uh, you change that. But that's a major uh, an adjustment that I haven't covered in this class. It's covered on the DVD. She says she has the DVD. Good. Watch the DVD at the end when she's transferring everything over to the pattern. She'll show you exactly how to do that, and it's so slick. And if you've got gaps up here and you've got to take a dart in here, what you're going to do is you're going to cut the excess out. But you've got to do it precisely, and it'll lay flat, and the excess won't be there, and you won't have some silly dart there that will look kind of funny. All right, so check that out, Karen. I'm glad you have that. That'll be helpful. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So, okay, so we covered that. And let's see. So let's see. I've got the uh, side front of my pattern and the side front of the 
the shirt pattern right here. So let's see how these are going to set together. So you're putting the sloper pattern on top. Yep. And I'm seeing very easily that I've got to change. Uh, let me see. Let me make sure I got this straight. Ooh, I did not have it straight. See how, and you can even measure between the two to make sure that you have your straighted grain per been parallel to the straighted grain on the other pattern. You've got to keep everything in line. Then you can see how much difference there is here in what I have to do. The shoulder slope is quite a bit different. Now, if I put this pattern on this body, what's going to happen is we're going to have a big fold right here that we don't want because we have that extra fabric that we don't want and it's at the wrong angle. So now we can just take a look at this and figure out exactly what size to cut and what changes to make. And in this case, we're going to have to subtract from the lower part, but we're going to have to add a little bit right up in here. Okay, let's see if I got another one. This is back. This is our back here. So this one's pretty easy because our center back is the fold line. So we're just going to line up the fold line. And now we can see that once again, the shoulder slope is off. And we've got to add here because we know we had that rounded back on this person. So it takes extra fabric to get it up to that neckline. And if you're like me and you've noticed that your necklines are coming down and you have all this skin showing here that was never there before, that's why the garment's not getting all the way up where it needs to be. And just, I've got to take a little, nip a little bit out of here on the side seam. But you can see it's almost spot on for the back. Just this little tiny adjustment. And on your particular pattern, you may have more drastic changes or much smaller changes. It's all according to your unique body shape. And remember that we all have unique body shapes. You know, that's like one of a kind. So your pattern's not gonna look like my pattern. And that's what confuses a lot of people when they start this process. They get done and they go, well, that doesn't look right. It doesn't look right for everybody, but it looks right for you. Well, and what they might have to change on this butterick pattern might be different than what they would change on a Vogue pattern or even a different butterick pattern. Or a different brand. Right. right. You know, an independent pattern company, whatever it is. A lot of the independents, they design for their own body shape and then they grade out. So it depends on their body shape. The commercial companies and what Islander and... Um, uh, fashion patterns does is we go by a set of standard measurements of an hourglass figure and we start at a somewhere around a size 8 or 10 and we grade both ways um, trying to keep it as simple to make the adjustments as possible but people that uh, are independents a lot of times you become independent pattern makers because they like to make patterns for themselves and people say oh I like that it's cute and the next thing you know, they're making more patterns, but they're all based on their body type. Mary is wondering, do you try to align the armhole before making the grain lines parallel or somewhere else on the pattern? Well, you're going to look for the best options. Um, and I think that the grain line is the most important thing and then I try to figure out where does it set best so it makes the most sense if I go over here now I got to add to this arm side down here and I don't if I stay over here then I don't now the dip and here's my size and whatever size this is it's a medium chances are that's going to be the sleeve I start with is the medium and then, of course, I'll need to make some adjustment for it to fit this arm side. But chances are, by the time you get done, and I haven't done this for you, but you can do it for yourself, you'll have your sloper sleeve. And you'll know it fits in this particular arm side. Now, there are cases in different designs 
that you might find that has a much higher arm size or a much lower. And in that case, then you'll, you'll kind of have to start with their sleeve and their arm size and fit it from there. Because let's say it's a dolman sleeve or a really deep sleeve, you don't want this sleeve anymore. And so you'll go with, you'll go with all the shaping, but you'll stay with their arm size for the size that you're cutting and their sleeve. And like I say for any of this, if this is the first time you've done this, you're new to this, whatever, or you are making some kind of adjustment like that where you're not sure that you're spot on, that's when you make the muslin real quick and make sure that you haven't made an error. Now, I made an error this morning. I cut uh, one of the pieces on the stitching line instead of the cut line, and I caught myself. But you could have done that and not noticed. Any little thing could happen. So before I cut out $25 to $30 yard fabric to make my beautiful little blouse or jacket, I want to make sure that I have got all my ducks in a row and everything's going to line up right. And again, you know how we've talked about doing a muslin? You don't even have to do the whole garment. You can just do the left front and the back and make sure that it's going to hang right. But if the sleeve is your issue, then you're definitely going to want to be able to put a sleeve in to make sure. Okay? Mm -hmm. So that's basically it. So remember, people, the key is keep everything on straight of grain. And... Um, Make sure that you clearly mark your seam lines versus your cut lines so you don't make the mistake I did this morning. You can always add it back on, but not after you've cut it out of the fabric. So make sure that everything's working the way you want it to before you cut out beautiful fabric. Remember to uh, use the notches. So make sure that you transfer the notches. If they get cut off of your sloper, make sure you transfer them back so you can get it to fit. And in this case, they have their own notches here. So you're gonna to wanna to use their notches. So once you trim this off, that notch isn't gonna be there anymore. It's almost in the same place as this one, but it's not exact. It's about an eighth of an inch off. So make sure that you transfer those notches. And get all your pieces to fit together properly. Notches are so important. And when I hear some well-meaning sewing uh, teachers tell a student that the notches aren't that important, it makes it makes my fingernails hurt. It's just like, are you kidding me? Because as a drafter, I know how important those notches are. They should match. And that's one of the reasons with Islander, we always tell you to make a little slit as opposed to a triangle because the little slits match up perfectly the triangles almost never do they're you know a little suspicious sometimes and so use um use the notches make the notches match all right any other questions jessica or are we just doing such a great job you're doing <laughs> such a great job oh uh, yay <laughs> But if there are questions, more questions, feel free. I mean, there are fitting issues that we have not addressed. Um, and, and again, with everyone having unique bodies, you may have a more unique fitting issue that we haven't discussed. But what we have given you should give you enough information uh, to understand how to make that adjustment. But if it doesn't, just send me an email. And again, I caution you, please send the email as opposed to a post on uh, a question on the Facebook inbox, um, a messenger, I think they call it, because I have all my resources at my fingertips when I do the email and I can keep a nice file in my, uh, my inbox, below my inbox, so I can, I can help you really quickly and more efficiently. 
But when it's in a Facebook, I have to keep coming back and forth and it takes me longer to get it done. So please, islandersewing at comcast.net. All right, Marlene says, I didn't cut my sloper back on the fold. Will correcting with super narrow seam affect the fit that much? I should lose less than a quarter inch total or do I need to recut? Okay. You could add fabric to it, but then your fabric's gonna be so close to the seam line, that would be kind of strange. It's not that big of a piece. Go ahead and waste the fabric and cut a new one. You'll be glad you did. The whole idea of this is to get a good fit. It's not about getting an okay fit. It's about getting a very good fit. Okay, Linda says, so you have the commercial pattern lying on the sloper pattern. What's next? A new tissue pattern? Well, that's entirely up to you. You um, know how you work best. So for me, I, make, I could right here just make the adjustments to the commercial pattern. And the nice thing about making the adjustments to the commercial pattern, all the data that you need is already on that pattern tissue. Uh, the pattern number, the manufacturer of the pattern, the, what the piece is, how many to cut, all that stuff. You know, all that data that's on there. And if you go and you have to trace it out and make a new pattern, you've got to transfer a lot of data. And so it's up to you. If you have to make such major changes that it just makes so much more sense, then go ahead and trace a new pattern. So it's all about your own personal preferences. Hmm. <laughs> what? She said rats. <laughs> I really didn't want to recut. Um, you don't have to. I said you don't have to, right? <laughs> you said you did. No. I would use the commercial pattern and make the changes to the commercial oh. pattern. And that way, all the data that is on the commercial pattern is there. And I don't have to transfer it. So I'm sorry if I made that hard to understand. So the, the answer is no, you do not have to make a new tissue pattern. But if it makes more sense to you or there's so many changes that it would work better, then yes, make a new one. So... It's yeah, she did. Really she has to recut it. Yeah, Marlene, tell me if you're. You trace around your sloper to make your commercial pattern be the same shape and size. If you have to add a little tissue paper, so because you have to go out a little bit on the commercial pattern, just add it and draw, cut. But if it's huge difference which it probably isn't going to be, particularly because we have all these multi-size patterns. And like for me, I'm one size on the top and an entirely different size on the bottom. So I might be an extra large on the top and a medium on the bottom. But with the extra tissue, I, I don't cut. Here's the other thing maybe you didn't notice. I don't cut the pattern size out. I leave the multi-size there, which gives me more tissue in case I need it added. So like it might, I think my pattern tissue goes three or four sizes. Does that make sense? Uh-huh. Okay. Sometimes when it's really clear to me. I no, <laughs> I was, it's me. Okay. It's me. I was. That's what I usually say. I was reading the questions and. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm new here. Oh, yeah, well you just got back. Yeah. Um, Roseanne wants to know, hi Roseanne, could you just use your sloper pattern for the body and the changes in the sleeve, then make the sleeve the length of the one in the fashion pattern and use the collar from the fashion pattern? Well, I think you're, that's, uh, no, <laughs> no. Here's the problem. The neckline on the commercial pattern is made for that collar. So, and whatever sleeve is going in it and the shape of the sleeve. And then you've got additional, uh, our bodice doesn't have a, uh, a front placket. 
So you have to have a placket down the front, and oftentimes there are folded so that you won't even have that on your pattern. Um, so there's, no. This, this sloper is supposed to be like an example of your shape of your body. The commercial pattern is what you want to make. You saw that picture and you love that sleeve treatment or whatever, and that's why you want to make that shirt. Now, if you know exactly what kind of collar you want and you just know pattern and you want a certain kind of thing, you can go ahead and draft those. And we're going to talk about that in a few minutes. So you can take this sloper and make anything you want out of it. Any type of, you could turn it into an evening dress. You could turn it into a camp shirt. You could turn it into just about a shift. Anything. Uh, if, but you need a little more support than what you get here on our live program. You'll need um, the appropriate uh, textbook for that. Okay. I think that that's a common question right now um, coming through in different ways. Because Patricia also said, if you are tracing the sloper to the commercial pattern, why not just cut from the sloper? Are you making all the patterns look like the sloper? All we're trying to do is make sure that that pattern fits the shape of our body. So the sloper is strictly, there's not all the components to a regular shirt in it because it's strictly made to be a sloper. A sloper to identify where you curve in and where you curve out and how much fabric you need to get up to your shoulder and how much uh, of a neckline shape you need to get up to the back of your neck. All of that, then you have the right coverage for your body. You can turn that into a pattern, but right now it's strictly just a sloper or a block. Both of those terms are synonymous. The difference is, is that you have a personal sloper or a personal block. It hasn't been drafted by some fictitious set of measurements. It's been drafted or created by your specific shape. So you have two choices. You use this as your sloper, which gets superimposed over patterns, so you know where to make the changes before you cut it out. Then you can sew it up with great ease, knowing it's going to fit. Or you can take the sloper and turn it into a pattern. And you can take the same sloper over and over again, starting with that sloper, and make a dozen different patterns. And a lot of people do that. I had an email from a woman today, and she's once she learned how, uh, from a little class on how to make a sloper, she's m drafting almost all of her own patterns now. And you start out with something simple, a little short sleeve, maybe a very simple collar, and you build on that. You don't try to go for the, you know, the uh, couture wedding dress first thing out of the box. You start and you build on your skills, and pretty soon you can use this pattern to make just about anything for yourself. That's what custom sewers do all the time. They create a block based on their customer's measurements they fit the muslin to them and then when a customer says make me xyz make me butter at 6647 whatever it is that uh seamstress goes to that block and pulls it out makes the pattern adjustment sews it up the customer comes in for a fitting and very little adjustments are usually needed is it is it is it sinking in now? Am I getting? I think so, but I, I mean, you guys feel free. If you have the question, someone else does too. So don't be shy to ask. Um, Pamela um, is asking as far as when you're comparing the two. So do we put the commercial pattern on top of the sloper or opposite? Well, I usually end up with the sloper on top of the commercial pattern because like I said, I leave extra tissue all the way around by not cutting out the specific size I want so that I can lay it on top and trace around it. If it's underneath, it's a little more difficult to see where to trace it. That's all. But whichever works best. Mm -hmm. The idea is, is to get the shape of your body, but to maintain the design of the particular pattern. Okay. Okay. Yep. 
We're done? <laughs> Bye. Bye. See ya. Um, I think one thing, I think we may have some new viewers this week, specifically because I've been talking to a lot of uh, students that had been a part of my crafty class and telling them that they can come to uh, Tuesdays at 2. Uh, but anyway, and I know some people invite their friends. So I think it's important to know who we are and what we do. And we're Islander Sewing Systems. And what we do is primarily teach better construction methods without pins or basting the way professionals sew in a garment factory. So we've adapted it to home sewing. And we show you, we have a lot of videos on here and on our, on our website on how to make certain garments. And we show you every step of the garment and I demonstrate how to sew without pins. And you soon learn that sewing without pins not only is not a detriment, but it's actually an asset. So uh, we have tons and tons of testimonials to how excited excited people are when they learn to sew this way and how much faster they sew so and that works out really well for people that do do it for a profession so many times people say oh will you sew for me and you think by the time i make that garment i want to make a dollar and a half an hour but when you learn a little smoother more professional techniques you can make that garment in half the time and maybe you still don't want to sew for money but you can make two garments in the time that it used to take you to make one. So that's more fun. But anyway, we also, uh, a couple years ago, acquired uh, fashion patterns by Connie. And Connie's expertise came from the industry as well. And her expertise was in pattern drafting and fitting. So we've added that to our repertoire of teaching. And we do it here on Facebook occasionally. Um, we have in-depth classes online on some platforms. And we'll be offering some more in-depth uh, classes um, starting this fall. And so that's what we are all about. We invite you to visit our website at islandersewing.com to see uh, all the other things we're about. And be sure to look up Sewing Mythbusters. It's on the website. Take a look. All right. So I have a couple more just clarification on how to use the sloper. And, um, Roseanne wants to know, when making a sloper fit, does the size of the neckline ever change? Sure. All right. So there you go. Um, that Remember to use a critical mm -hmm. eye at the sloper. Okay. Remember the sloper is a block. What a block is is a base there are no net there is no nothing it's the most basic neckline that comes right up to your collarbone here okay and that's how you've drafted it so when you look at your pattern and you say well that's got a v-neck or it's got a wider neck or a scoop neck or whatever it might be then yeah those are going to change and you're going to leave the neckline alone on, because that's the commercial pattern and that's the reason you bought that pattern because you wanted that neckline. Okay, so it, along those lines, Brenda asks, so if the style has a the style you uh, in the commercial pattern say um, has a couple inches of ease because of that's the style, you wouldn't trim the extra to match the sloper. Very good question. That's our Brenda. Brenda, that's Brenda. Brenda, good one. Yes, take a critical eye. Now, let's say that you're making a very, uh, some of the Japanese styles, like the Izzy Miyakis, and I know Sewing Workshop has a few, uh, very basic, but they're meant to flare out on the side seams. They're meant to have a lot of ease. So take a look at that, and don't, uh, you know, don't take that away, because then again, like people have been worried that it, then all you're going to end up with is another copy of your sloper. So, but you do want to make sure you have the right shoulder slope, particularly if you have a shoulder slope issue or one shoulder higher than the other or that rounded back or that short waist or that long waist. Those are the things you'd be looking for in an oversized garment. You still want it to hang right on your body and be the right shape for your body, but you don't want to change the shape of the original design. 
that should be clear, I think. I know this is all new, and I really am excited that everyone followed me along, not even really knowing what they were going to do with this. <laughs> but um, I think, if nothing else, it's been a really good education to start to understand how a garment is put together as far as the pattern pieces and how to make it uh, contour to your body. All right. Is that all our questions? For now, yeah. Okay. Um, so you have um, an exciting sale, I see. Oh, yeah. So, like I was saying, that, and I figured that there was a certain percentage of you that were going to want to take this and run with it. And I know some of you have had really good success. Mary Jackson's um, soap was beautiful. And she did not have an easy body to fit, specifically because of the the way her spine is angled. And I'm sorry, Mary, I forget why you had that, whether you had an accident or not. But anyway, she did not have an easy body to fit, and she did a beautiful job. Her front was perfect right away, but the back was an issue, and yet she got it. So I'm hoping other people are having that same... Uh, moment of oh wow it fits all the lines are straight everything's yep. hanging right marlene says you're you're excited about these fitting classes we're ecstatic about them okay good good it, you you have no idea i don't know if it's a fatal flaw for me but i get really invested in other people's success when i teach and the worst thing that can happen to me is somebody to come up and say you know i never finished that project it makes me crazy it makes me crazy. What do you mean you didn't finish it? Go home and finish it Because right she <laughs> has finished every project she has ever started. That's right. Thanks for pointing that out, Jess. Let's see under the cutting table. That's just bad. Please. Take a little look <laughs> see. Um, okay, so, but you were about to tell them about the sale. Okay, so in the sale, I know there are going to be people that want to take this and run with it and start maybe creating their own little patterns and that would be really exciting so in honor of that we're putting our all of our books on sale this week but i want to start with oh here it is this is connie's i mean this is used in universities all over the country pattern making made easy and it will take you through every type of garment for women Every uh, kind of collar, sleeve, uh, hemline, whatever you want to make, and you've already got your sofa started, you'll see how to start with a basic block and go from there. And her directions are excellent, and I've used this book many times, and the illustrations are fabulous, so it's hard to really not understand. And she specializes in the plus size body so there's a whole chapter in there on fitting the mature and plus size body which you won't find any place else and it's really important she did a six-year study in order to understand what happens when we age and we gain weight and how to make the pattern still hang beautifully on the body and so um I'm getting the sign that I need to get going. So that book. But you also, once you have the bodice, you may want to um, do skirts. So Connie has a book here on making it, fashioning your own skirt. So every kind of skirt possible, straight, full, flounces, uh, peplums, ruffles, you name it. Um, and we've got fitting patterns by draping your pattern on the body. And that might be of interest to some of you. Um, her grading book is also on sale. And the grading book comes with a grading ruler. And what this allows you to do is to take patterns from, let's say you bought a vintage pattern, a vintage pattern on Etsy, and it's a size 12 and you're 18. You can grade it up. Uh, our pants. Uh, drafting book. 
this will help you create a pair of pants that fits you uniquely. And no place else are we more unique than in the pants. And you know that by trying to purchase pants or make pants, right? Um, so that book is on sale. Is this one? Yep. Jackets. Uh, so custom tailored jackets. This takes you through everything um, fitting as well as the um, you know changing the sleeve cap, getting everything just right, and then all the underpinnings of making a good lined and uh, in, all the infrastructure of a really nice custom jacket and of course my book on sewing without pins and basting is also part of the sale and the sale is 20% off it's for one week and the code is the code is books all caps 20 I, nobody she, told me the code oh. She was in the room. She just wasn't listening. So, 20% off for this week on those books. So, if you're getting excited, that might be the way to go in the drafting. And I know that's not the direction you're all going to go in, nor should you all go there. So, go there if that's, um, that's a place that sounds like fun and will work good for your sewing. I'm sorry, Well. Okay, so you want to do this or you want to you want to wait? Why wouldn't I do that? Because we're running late. I, I mean, do you want to see the fabric, Brenda? Yeah. Okay, so Brenda um, wants a reminder on the lawn, the lawn we used to have. Yeah, we have lawn. Pre-wash? No, nope. we don't need the pre-wash. Mm -hmm. So um, just a reminder on that. Um, we have the kits as well as the lawn. So a lot of people have bought the kit, made the shirt, and then they come back and buy more fabric yeah. to make more shirts. And that's all in video on our website, The Islander Shirt. Okay. Um, also, because I know there was a lot of comments on it, we touched on it briefly last week, but we don't have very much more information. Um, as far as blueprints and Craftsy, yes, they have sent out notice to all of their customers that they are closing shop. Um, we do not have information on the classes. It's our hope and it's starting to get trickle of information that you will be able to keep those classes, but we don't have confirmation. So I do not want to pass on bad information when we do have, we'll let you know. They've seen, um, other than the fact of abruptly shutting down they have seemed very um forward with the information so mm -hmm. i would just look for more and, um to come on that and if you don't get a personal email you can just go to their home page and they'll be posting it right on the home page yeah. right now there's a notice there that says there's going to be more information coming so you can always just go look at the home page periodically to see what the what the information is, but you can no longer buy any classes. That for sure is over. Okay, so um, we are running long, but we've also uh, been teasing you with this fabric. It is on the website, but I know you guys like to see it and ask some questions, and um, I think they want to see it. And if you don't, don't feel bad. You can see go ya. Back. You can go back <laughs> to sewing yeah. or napping. Or working, we won't tell anybody. Uh, um, but these are the Japanese fabrics. And ever since I taught the first class I did on Craftsy with the Jacket Express class, and this is uh, that I got a lot of compliments. Where did you get the fabric? How can I get some more of that fabric? So luckily, before everything got shut down earlier this winter, I ordered some Japanese fabric because it takes like eight to ten weeks to get it. And it came in, so I'm really glad because if I was ordering it now, it'd probably be October before I get it. So I didn't get in everything, but I've got some nice jacket weights and some shirt weights. So let's start with the jacket weights. These are perfect for either the Jacket Express or the Fast and Fabulous. So, and please uh, check the website for the fiber content. This one's 100% cotton. Here, Jess, you always like to show the fabric. Always like to. All right, this is some really fun colors. Obviously, firework-ish. Uh, she'll get you going for the 4th of July. Or just for any day. Yeah, this will make 
and it's that kind of fabric, the weave and everything, it doesn't take a, very much ironing or pressing. So these are the kind of jackets I would wear as I traveled around the country <laughs> teaching because they just, I could pop them out of the suitcase and put them on. I hate them. Just, oh, go ahead. Ahead. just so everyone knows when you say wood, it would be uh, good for this is the jacket express. It is um, the jean style a jacket. A jean style, like a little bit of a fitted. Breast pockets um, here, yep. breast pockets, and it has welt pockets in the front. Pretty much your typical kind of jean jacket, okay. little fitted jean jacket. Lots of top stitch opportunity. Okay, what else for the jacket? All right, this one, I know, I love this one. I you know have... you're never going to see a set of fabrics that Janet bought without some black and white. So this is a cotton linen, and because the tag I have right here is in Japanese, I'm not sure which one, which way it goes. 80. You need to brush up your Japanese. Yeah, I did. I actually had to look it up online because it's, it's symbols, you know. You know what symbol mean? One means cotton, one means linen. So it's an 80-20. Um, and sometimes they have like more cotton than linen and some have more linen than cotton. Uh, but that's, you know, but they, geometric, this would be very fun, especially with the top stitching, I think. See, this one is cotton linen 45-55, so it's not as big of a difference. In, you know, it's almost 50-50. This one's fun. This is silver metallic spot. So if you can't quite tell from the camera, and it really does not look great on camera, um, but those spots the, are silver. They are actually metallic. They are a shimmer to them. And it is a rich black. Uh, black is hard on, yeah, the further away you get, that's you get. That's just inside the fabric. Don't mm -hmm. look at that. Put your camera around. But, yeah, so that's a silver. You can see a little bit more. Oh, now that Janet left. Uh, it does have that shimmer to it. It's really fun. Like, not too much. You know, you're not going, like, little kid glitter yeah. or sequin flippies. Um, but no, it's but it would be fun to put some silver buttons yes. and, and top stitching on. And it would give you a little pizzazz without... Now yeah. we're moving on, or no? Yeah. This is jacket. Mm-hmm. This is a lighter weight, so this would make, uh, you know, a little bit lighter weight uh, a jacket, but it also makes up fabulous in uh, both of those jackets or on your favorite jacket pattern. Now this is doesn't have the metallic, but it does have, like, the gray tones, white and the gray. Uh, the gray does give off a little bit of a silver, but it doesn't have the metallic in it. No, but they actually uh, lay quite well together. Yes. If you wanted to put something together mm -hmm. there. And actually the silver spot goes with this one too, <laughs> even though there's no silver in there. Um, but I think it goes better with that it could one. could go with a lot. Yep. All right. And then we have a cotton canvas here. Ooh, this is fun. This if is you are fun, I mean, you're all fun, but if you like to be looking fun... And this has metallic gold. So wherever you see a gold, like the glasses here, I don't know if that's a pink rim or some, but there's that gives it a little bit. She has gold jewelry and gold uh, glasses. She needs a name. I called her Stacy. I don't think she appreciates that. Uh, and this one's 100% cotton, and they are all around 44 inches wide. So that's all the jacket. Okay, so Pamela is asking, how many yards do you need for a jacket or how many for a shirt? Well, it's between two and a half and three. I'll tell you on the jacket right now. Let's see if I have it out here. This is the type of fabric that, you know, is like the deer as far as you're going to wear this. Everyone's going to say, where'd you get that? Where can I get that fabric? Uh, once it's gone, yeah, know. once it's gone, I don't know if I could ever get any more, and if I could, it takes like three or four months. It makes me crazy, but they have such cool fabric, it's worth the wait sometimes. Um, in the Jacket Express, be three yards for a large, and three and three-fourths for a 2X, so that kind of gives you an idea, and it's three yards for any size up to a large, so you need three yards. Um, a shirt, it's going to be two and a half to three, depending on 
um, and we've got some sheridan fabric here just a couple pieces so this one we have in two colorways so this is onto the shirting yes and this is also it's a little lighter than a quilter's cotton but it's very similar but look at it if they can see I'm this trying to find it what i like about this is it's a japanese fabric but it's also a japanese oh, this one. Uh, design the image on here is very fine and subtle and every once in a while, I call these twigs. I don't know if that's what they are, vines or twigs. I call them twigs. There is a subtle gray one every once right in a while. Here. And so they're not all of these are the same color. So just when you're up close, you you this appreciate is, the subtlety yeah. of the Japanese design. This is a great, great choice. And you can be both of these people. But this is a great, great choice for like if you're not this person. <laughs> If you're not this person, but you're not boring, this is a great choice for you because it's the subtle color, and but but it's got that pop, that little pop of, oh, look at that. That's fun. And then this color uh, is this, you got the same, but you can actually see the extra color a little bit more in this one. Yeah stands out a little bit more. Well, it's a little bit easier on camera too cuz the other one it's what it's not white, but it's not pink. I called it pale coral. Would you? Yeah. Okay. Cuz it's see it's uh, more yeah. orange than pink. It's not yeah, it's not peach. Just, yeah. It's like lighter. Mhm. Mm but just so you know, it's not white. So pale peach, pale coral, but it's very pale. Very pale. And fun. And then this is like your darker, your kind of denimish color. Yeah, I called it blue gray, I think. Yep. So that kind of tells it. So, um, yeah. And it, those are um, really nice shirting weight. Now, those of you, don't call me out on this because you, I always tell you a true shirting is good on both sides. It's a woven. So, like if it's a woven plaid, it looks the same on both sides. These are considered shirtings or sheeting, but they are printed because you couldn't weave this type of pattern. So know that they are, they do have a wrong side, an obvious wrong side, um, if that makes a difference in the design you're sewing. Okay, Marlene wants to know what the background color on this is. It is a raspberry. I think so. It's a raspberry pink. It's a bright pink. I wanted to know what she would say. It's a bright pink without being a bright pink. If you have this pattern, it's this color and it's across the bottom. Pretty close. Yeah. Pretty close. Now the jacket on there is red, but, but along the bottom it's a pink. Mm -hmm. It's I would call it a raspberry. Yeah, it's not hot pink. Sor raspberry sorbet. Yeah. It's not mm -hmm. hot pink, but it is a, a darker pink. Yeah. All right, then I, we have two summer weights that I think are lovely. And oh, yes. they're not gauze, but they're almost that weight. So these would be great for a summer, little summer shirt, uh, vacation type of uh, little cover-ups. You can make the Baja out of this and it'd be a beautiful um, beach cover up. Let's be going the other way. Well, here's the funny story. She just said, should this be going yeah, the other yeah. way? When I first saw this, I thought it was, to me, in my mind, okay, I have a crazy imagination, it was herbs being dried yeah, in that's the cottage. What I thought. That's what it looked like to me. But then when I laid it out on the table, it looked better going where the the going up going up and then so then i look at the way it was rolled on the bolt one colorway is rolled one way and the other colorway is rolled the other way so it's up to you so it's up to you if you want them going up or down just know that it's a one-way print but it is you won't want them going up on one side and down on the other so make sure you cut all your pieces going in the same direction it's very very beautiful it's the white with the very subtle blues purples um a little smidge little teal, smidge of gold, gold mm -hmm. in the teal i mean it's really and it really has a gorgeous. very lovely soft hand yeah it's just be beautiful i mean i feel like very if breezy. you made a shirt out of this you would feel like really 
sophisticated. And if you're familiar with the brand, that's a Coca. And, and here it is in the other colorway. So this is an ecru background. One is a true white background. This one's the ecru background. And this one only has the blues and greens. It doesn't have any other colors, so no. it's a little... But you see the detail even in the background mm -hmm. of the, the colors, weave, yep. of the weave. It's just... It's subtle. It's that, you know, we kind of chose from two different ways with the Japanese fabric. From the bright, kitschy stuff that's always fun and kind of um, different from what you see. Uh, and then their subtle, more traditional Japanese where... Uh, things are you have to see it up close to really appreciate it but it, this does have a lovely yes. fan yes and um, Marianne pointed out what we were talking about like the hanging of the herbs you could see there's like a bow like some of them are tied and now I lost it oh right here is one like a little bow where they're tied together yeah so I so. photographed them going up I think that's the ones I put out. I photographed them both ways and I couldn't make up my mind. And then I thought, well, what difference does it make how I like it? It's how you, whoever buys it and uses it. That's probably it. why they roll them separate on the bowl. I, maybe I mean, that's it, but I can't. Um, Brenda <laughs> wants to know how much ironing on the herbs. I'm going to say um, it's going to need a light touch. I would say the other two would need more pressing. Really? Yeah. Um, this is just that really soft stuff. Uh, I mean, you could see there's a little bit of a wrinkle here from being on the bolt, oh, but yeah. I mean, it's not, it's not yeah. like you're going to sit down and be a wrinkle in that. No, and these are cotton. All the shirtings are 100% cotton, so there's no linen to cause creasing. Um, what else was I going to say about that? I'm too full. I was going to say something. Maybe it'll come back to me. Um... Oh, I took my regular four-inch square of every single one of these fabrics. I washed it in warm, and I dried it on warm, and I received no shrinking. Oh. So people always ask me. So uh, it's up to you whether you want to pre-wash or pre-shrink. If you think you're going to use hot water or a hotter dryer or anything like that, it might make sense um, at least to do your own four inch square the way you would launder it. And then if it doesn't shrink, you don't have to wash the and pre shrink and press the whole piece. Okay. So Sherry is asking which one is A17 and which one is A18? One is white. Right. She said the colors aren't showing up. The this, click on it. And the same on you. the website. Yeah. Okay, what does that one say? Go down the description. Background. Second line. Okay, the white background, Sherry, is the A17. A17 is the white background. And I'll just check the 18 right now to make sure. Whenever you look at the fabric on our website, know that you can click on it and get more I see, details. I see. I'm glad we showed these, though, because I see her, the confusion. So the ecru is the A18. And they do look much different side by side than they do in the pictures yeah. of the website but obviously you know this is a true stark white and this is a true ecru so this is 17 and this is 18. Okay. i'm glad you asked that yeah and let me see if i got anything else i think the way our website works so some two people don't realize they can get more information by clicking on the image and then it pops up and gives you um, a description as well as a lot of times a second image of a larger picture to look at as well. And of course we put the little ruler at the bottom so you can see exactly what size the images might be. Um, okay. So that's the fabric um, Janet teased you weeks ago with, and we finally have it on the website, and now you get to see it. If you have any questions, please email us, islandersewing at comcast.net. Uh, I know it's very easy to shoot a message off on Facebook, but don't expect a fast answer. <laughs> but 
Uh, That's on, not on purpose. No, but on email, I'm just giving you the heads up. Janet is pretty um, good on the email. Uh, she sometimes can't tear herself away. So if you would like to, I mean, we all know what that says. If you um, would like a quicker response, please, islandersewing at comcast.net. That's for your own benefit. I, yeah, no matter how you send me the question, I'll answer it. I just feel bad when I go in and I see it was like three days ago or something and yeah. I didn't catch it. So, uh, but the emails I'm, we're constantly yes. reviewing. Um, okay, and I think that that's all for today, right? Yeah, I think it is. Uh, next week we'll have a surprise. Yes, to everybody, including us. Yes, for everybody that's new, I did see a couple people say <laughs> I don't like, know what we're doing "I love week. the knit, I love this." Like, what's next? Um, if you're fairly new, uh, we'll probably uh, go back to some more like tips, techniques, and stuff. We've done quite a few sew alongs, and then usually in between, we work on general tips and techniques and. Uh, if you have something that you want to see us talk about, feel free to send yeah. us an email on that, too. Um, I'd like to do another sew-along. Yeah. And so it would be great to hear from you as to uh, which pattern. Right. Which pattern of the island or sewing systems patterns designed by me that you would like to see as a sew-along. Maybe we could do that. All right. Well, um... Our stay-at-home order has been lifted, as you could see. I am not breaking the rules. So um, as long as that stays in place, uh, we'll be back next week. Uh, I hope we were able to provide um, a nice, informative, educational experience for your day, take away from all that's going on out there. Um, we wish you all happiness and health and hope that you are doing great with everything yeah. we're dealing with stay safe stay positive and i'm janet pray i'm jessica johnson we'll see you next week thanks so much for tuesdays at two bye-bye